All right, everybody. We are officially live. My name is Mehran, founder of TestMax. Can everybody hear me? All right, well, we'll wait a little bit here as people roll in. Um, the way this is going to work is I'll start with a general um, introduction to, to myself, my background, uh, and then obviously transition to the point of this uh, live Instagram session, which is, is my first ever Instagram live. So bear with me if I have any issues here. I've never actually done an Instagram live before. I, I generally think social media is poison for the mind. But, you know, as we think about flawed logic, that would probably be overgeneralizing. So we'll be an exception today um, and really make good use of this and, and get some good information out to you guys, uh, particularly those of you who are taking the first digital LSAT, which will be this Monday, uh, July 15th. So um, I appreciate all you guys' kind words in the comments there. Um, again, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to, to drop them in the, the chat and, and I will try to get to as many of them as possible. So let's get started. My name again is Mehran. I am the founder and CEO of TestMax. Um, it's a company that I actually co-founded while I was a student at Harvard Law School, uh, really to try to use technology to disrupt what we feel uh, is, a, is a very archaic space in, in standardized testing. Um, obviously, our first product, BarMax, same exact idea for the bar exam, uh, and then LSAT Max uh, was our second uh, product. Uh, and prior to going to law school, I was actually a, a, a teacher for uh, one of the leading in-class LSAT prep companies um, before you know going to law school and then uh, deciding to, to use technology to try to address a lot of the inefficiencies that I felt pervaded that model. Um, my personal background with the LSAT, you know, I started with a 148 on my first practice exam and I was literally guessing on everything. Um, I remember walking out of that practice exam thinking I should come up with a new plan uh, because law school is not going to happen for me. Um, but I eventually scored a 174. Uh, which, which again got me accepted to Harvard Law School where I graduated in 2010. So I hope that gives you the confidence that uh, the LSAT is something that's learnable, right? I was clearly not a natural, um, but by putting in the work and, and approaching it with the right strategies, uh, I was able to, to really improve my score. Um, so, so it is possible. And again, we know that the LSAT is the number one factor in law school admissions. So please spend the time on it. Now, a lot of students ask me all the time, you know, how long did that journey take for me to go from a 148 to a 174? Uh, it took me about seven months, right? And, and when you wonder why do, we, um, why do we offer lifetime access, right? It's because, you know, we, we really want students to think about LSAT prep as a longer than eight, 10 week period of time, right? It, it again, it's the most important factor in law school admissions. Um, so we should do everything we can to, to maximize our score. Uh, not only if you're shooting for the top schools, um, but also from the if, if you're you know you're, you have your sights set on a you know some of the lower ranked schools is fine, uh, but it also increases your chances of merit based scholarships, which is great because there's absolutely nothing wrong with going to lower ranked law schools. There is something wrong with borrowing two hundred thousand dollars though to do that, if that school won't give you the job prospects to repay it right just from an economic perspective. Um, so. Um, obviously, you know we were the first company back in in two thousand twelve to put an LSAT on a tablet with LSAT Max. And now that the LSAT is going to be officially administered on tablets, we couldn't be um, more excited about it because obviously this is something we've been doing. Um, and I actually had the, the privilege of taking the, the digital LSAT um, a couple years ago when LSAC was doing their test runs. So I've actually had personal experience with it outside of uh, our app. So I'll, I'll talk a lot about that today as well. Um, so Obviously, half of the takers on Monday will get the digital LSAT, half will get the, the traditional paper pencil version. You're not going to know uh, until you show up on exam day, so it's nothing you can think about um, before you get there. But obviously, when you get there, you're going to know whether it's digital or paper pencil. So we're all familiar with the paper pencil version, so let's focus in on the main differences that I would make sure uh, that you get comfortable with before now and Monday in terms of the digital LSAT. Uh, when I took it, I found that logical reasoning and reading comp were very similar. Um, I actually felt you move faster in the section because of the, the flagging and the touch technology, right? So you can imagine you're in a logical reasoning section, you kind of get stumped on question six, you flag it, you go through the section, you're on question 25, you finish it, you got 30 seconds left, you want to jump back to question six, all you have to do is tap 
um, the bottom bar here, right? And you can actually literally jump back to that question, right? So super convenient, right? In terms of saving you time. Now, uh, obviously that the app I was showing was LSAT Max. You can take a free digital LSAT right now in either LSAT Max or our new app, Practice LSATs by LSAT Max. The new apps link is in our Instagram profile. So definitely make sure to download it if you haven't already um, and expose yourself to a digital LSAT. Now, uh, one of the questions I received uh, before it started, so we'll, we'll answer it now, was, you know, in terms of reading comp, should you spend time, you know, making notes on scratch paper um, as you read the passage? You know, as, you know, one of the things we talk about in our course is as you read through the, the, the passage, you know, make little shorthand notes, like one or two words about what that paragraph was about, right? Um, and should you kind of do that in the digital LSAT? And I would say yes, right? I, obviously, you know, the way I would try to organize my, my scratch paper is the paragraphs, right? Paragraph one, paragraph two. So just writing a one, a two, and then the same thing you would have put on uh, your paper pencil uh, version of, of the LSAT is what I would put there. Um, so yes, uh, I would do that. Now, in terms of, sorry about that guys, I, I might have to do that every now and then because, you know, I, need to, I get parched back here, but. Um, so the main difference for me, and I think you guys will, will find it to be the same in terms of the digital LSAT is the logic games. And the reason I say that is without the game on a piece of paper, right? Without the, the game, without the questions, without the answer choices laid out in front of you, uh, as it is in, in, a, in a traditional LSAT exam, um, let me pull that up so everyone can see it, although it will be uh, backwards here, right? Here's an example of a, of a logic game, right? Laid out for me, nice and neat on this page. Okay, so the beauty of that was as I went through the game and I was doing my setup or doing hypotheticals for different questions or answer choices, I would have that material nicely and neatly organized as I progressed, right? Because one of the things that you notice is the LSAC rewards students who make use of previous work. So having that work nicely and neatly organized is really helpful for you. You know, they love giving you the question of which of the following must be true. The correct answer choice is E. If you have to go through A and D before getting to E to realize that, it's a time trap question. Whereas if you're using previous work, um, you can easily eliminate A through D and quickly select E as the correct answer. So. Uh, that is something that I think you should really get comfortable with, right? Using your scratch paper and maintaining the same type of organization that you did in the traditional paper pencil version, right? Um, and so, so that's something to consider. I saw a question here coming through about uh, the amount of scratch paper that they give you. I'm assuming that you know they'll, they'll give you a, a decent amount, um, and you'll probably be able to request more sheets as you go through that. Um, I, I did print up some stuff about the digital LSAT from LSAC that I'm happy to take a look at too. Um, all it says is that it will provide scratch paper and a pen. It doesn't say how much, but I'm assuming they'll give you as much as you need there. Um, so I hope that answers your question, Sarah. Um, yeah, I would imagine it's going to be a, a good amount of um, material there. Um, so again, yeah, so everyone who's asking the question about being able to take notes, the answer is yes. The digital LSAT, you will have scratch paper. So you're going to get scratch paper and a pen, but you will also be able to use your own pencil and eraser so you can bring that to the exam as well, which you're going to have to bring just in case you get the, the paper pencil version. Um, and for those of you who are getting this, the digital LSAT, they will also be providing you with a stylus, right, that you can use to highlight and underline uh, stuff on um, the, the digital LSAT, right? Um, and obviously, as we emphasize in our course, right, the importance of identifying conclusions on, on logical reasoning questions. You know, I actually used to underline it um, on my LSAT. You know, you still have that ability with the digital LSAT. So, so that's a, a general overview of that. Um, but again, I do think it's something to get comfortable with. Now, obviously, if you haven't taken a digital LSAT now, I think the main um, issue, uh, so again, yeah, so I did take the digital LSAT. I did take this, the, one of those sample exams. I didn't find it to be harder. Again, it's the exact same exam. The difference is getting comfortable with it now being digital. And again, the difference is the logic games, right? Focus on the logic games. 
because that is what is different about uh, the digital LSAT, right? Um, so, so definitely um, take, take note of that. You won't be able to, to write notes on the tablet, right? So you can't use the stylus to write notes. The stylus is gonna be used for highlighting and for underlining, right? So anything we're, we're writing is gonna be written on the scratch paper, right? Um, let's see this question here. Oh, okay, yeah, we'll talk about that too. So another thing that, that is, uh, so we're talking about the important differences. Another really important difference, although not really important because they don't grade it, but the writing section or the writing sample, right? It's no longer going to be part of the day of the LSAT. You know, before when you did the five sections, you, you think you're done, and then they hit you with the, the writing sample, which is not even graded, you know, it's not part of your score, so why, why do I have to waste my time with that? Thankfully, LSAC now gives you the ability to log in online up to a year after your LSAT to take that writing sample. So as of, so as of Monday, you're gonna be able to log in online, sit down, obviously you have to sit down for the same amount of time that they're giving you and complete that writing sample and you're gonna complete it online. But again, remember, it's not graded it's nothing to worry about. All you wanna do is form complete sentences, make a, 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 an argument, one, taking a position, right? It's always them asking you to take a position, take that position, use the th uh, five paragraph um, format that you see, uh, we learned way back way, I don't even remember when we learned it, middle school, right? Intro, par intro paragraph, three body paragraphs, conclusion, right? Um, in terms of being able to search, no. But remember now, right, for reading comprehension, the way that it works is there's no more line references in the question. So when it says, for example, in the paper LSAT, you know, which of the following best um, explains the author's use of the word purple, and then it says line 31, right? That's not gonna happen anymore on the digital LSAT. What's gonna happen on the digital LSAT now is they're just gonna highlight the passage for you, right? Um, so, um, yeah, I think um, that's the way I would think about it. In terms of, would I recommend a new prep course to prepare for the digital LSAT? N nice question, Jake. No, I wouldn't recommend a new prep course to prepare for the digital LSAT because, again, the, the exam is the same. So hopefully your, your prep course that you already used instilled the right strategies and you feel comfortable with that foundation. What I would recommend is getting practice LSATs in digital format that you can take, right? LSAT gives you three for free, which are 71, 73, and 74. They're on their website and you can take them on computers as well as mobile devices. Um, Obviously, you do need an internet connection for that, so you, you definitely want to make sure that when you decide to take it, it's a stable um, connection that you're using. Um, but then outside of that, you can use our new app. Uh, again, Practice LSATs by LSAT Max. It's available uh, to download um, in uh, Android, uh, the, the Google Play Store, and, and the iOS Store. And this is what it looks like, and it literally has every single uh, digital LSAT available as an in-app purchase, right? Um, the old exams are $2.99. The new exams are $9.99. And so that's really all you would need. Um, you know, in terms of using a computer to, to simulate it, you know, I mean, it's, it's definitely better than taking it paper pencil. I think the issues with trying to do it on a computer as opposed to a tablet are twofold. One, you don't, unless your computer has touch technology, you're not going to have that the touch technology of the, the tablet. So, so you have to use your mouse, which again, moving your mouse and doing the same thing is not the end of the world. Um, and then, um, yes, and, and oh yes, and something to be aware of. Our, our exams that are online on LSAT Max Online are not in the digital LSAT for, format right now. They're, only the app has that. We are in the process of updating the online version though to match the UI of the app, um, but the things about the doing it online that we we there's a reason we prioritized uh, tablet. I think you know the tablet is how you're going to take it, so it's nice to get comfortable with that. Um, and then in in terms of not having to rely on an internet connection, right? I can just see the the 
you know, how, how disappointing it would be if you're on section five of your practice LSAT, right? Um, and your internet goes out. I mean, you just wasted all that time. So, um, all right, so I, I, guys, I appreciate all the questions coming in. So just give me a, a second. I, I'm going to get through all of them. In terms of the size of your iPad, yeah, I think it, it's really not relevant, right? Any of the iPads are fine, even really the iPad mini, although it will be definitely smaller. Um, I think, you know, any any size tablet, and again, guys, remember, you don't need to buy a tablet to do this. If anybody you know has a tablet, download our free app, borrow their, else, their, their, their thing, download our free app, right? Um, and you can even log in with your own iTunes account if you, if you want to make any in-app purchases, right? So you don't need to feel like you have to go buy a tablet for this, right? If anybody has one, you just need to download our app. Um, we talked about doing it on a computer. Electronic test is not going to come with a Scantron, right? The idea of, of the electronic test is you're answering it directly in the the tablet by an, by like selecting the answer choice, right? Like that would be me submitting my answer for that, right? Um, and obviously, the the idea there long term is it's going to help. Um, it's going to help uh, uh, the the scores come out sooner, right? Because it's digital and, and they don't have to send scantrons in to have them graded. We'll get scores out sooner. You know, that way, if you're taking the exams in the fall, you know, it's not the end of the world with rolling admission. Um, you get your, ex your scores faster and you, you have more opportunities to take it. Um, in terms of the diagnostics on LSAT Max being the same format as the digital LSAT, yes, with the exception of our reading comp passages, do not currently highlight. We still use the line references. That will be an update that's coming. And our logical reasoning is not split into two columns like the rest of it, reading comp and logic games are split into two columns. Our, our logical reasoning is just one thing, um, but that's an update that's also coming. Other than that, it's identical. It has the, the timer, uh, the highlighter, the underline, uh, the, the flagging, the, the jump around touch technology. Um, During the digital year, we're really given. Yeah, so again, you will have scratch paper. Um, in terms of accommodations, this is a, it's actually a great question. Um, you know, so what LSAC has said about accommodations, I can actually, I can actually pull it up here and read it to you guys uh, verbatim. Um, okay, so the question here on their, their FAQ is, what accommodations will be available for test takers with disabilities? Because obviously, you know, the screen presents problems for people, I think, right? And what they say is, LSAC is excited to deliver the digital LSAT, which enhances access to test takers with its many built-in accessibility features. So the stuff that they're referring to there are the stuff like your ability to change um, the size of the font, right? You see that we have that, right? The ability to change the spacing between the lines, right? The brightness, right? So that's some of the, the built-in accessibility features that they're talking about, right? Um, so um, it then says LSAC recognizes, however, that some test takers may need other accommodations to access the digital LSAT. Accommodations that traditionally have been available on the LSAT and that are not uniquely applicable to the paper pencil test remain available on the digital LSAT in accordance with LSAC's stated policies and procedures for testing accommodation. So I think that's obviously a reference to additional time, right? Because um, that is an accommodation that's not relevant to the paper pencil version. Uh, so that's definitely gonna still be available, but that's something to check with LSAC um, in terms of your specific needs there. Um, if you don't have a tablet, would you recommend uh, taking the test on your phone? No, I would not recommend doing that. It's too small. Um, you know, the app, our app is great for, you know, drills and questions on the go, but not for simulated LSATs. Um, yes, again, in terms of our app, it is identical to the digital LSAT with the exception of the two things I mentioned, right? It's not currently highlighting liner note questions, line reference questions from reading comprehension. It'll still say line 31. Um, and it doesn't split logical reasoning into two columns. Our questions are one column. But other than that, it's the same exact thing. The reading comprehension passages will not be shorter um, on the digital LSAT. Again, guys, the exam is identical in terms of the content. The difference is um, that we are going to be... Um, we're going to be... Um, 
taking it in a different medium. Um, in terms of glitches during the test, well, obviously, I think that's the million dollar question here, right? Um, and hopefully, I mean, you know, they partnered with Microsoft. Um, so, you know, I'm assuming that, you know, obviously, I think the reason half of the examinees are getting it and not everybody, right? We're still in the, the process of making sure that this transition is as seamless as possible for students. Um, and obviously, I think that's another reason that they're giving you the, the option to cancel your score, right? Um, which I think is really nice. And we'll talk about that as well. Um, but obviously, if there's a glitch that happens during the exam, I'm really not sure how they would deal with that because it, it's never happened. So, um, yeah, I would um, hope that that doesn't arise. Um, but, you know, obviously with technology, as we can say, you know, firsthand, you know, definitely uh, things do uh, present themselves that were not anticipated. But, you know, I think, you know, one thing to keep in mind is these tablets are going to be closed universes, right? They're they're just their job is going to be to administer this exam to you. It's not nothing else is really going on. Um, so again, you know, I apologize if the app isn't available on on certain tablets. You know, um, you know, we, we we're aware that it doesn't work on every Android tablet. Um, but again, it is it is available on a ton of them. And again, the, the online version will be updated as well, which will eliminate the need at all for you guys to go get a tablet, even though um, if you haven't bought a prep course yet, we do have a package that comes with a tablet that's yours to keep forever. And it not only gives you lifetime access, it's also more affordable than, than any of our competitors. Uh, all right, so let's talk a little bit about now canceling uh, the score, right? Uh, we have a couple questions about that uh, that came in uh, uh, earlier as well. Uh, that I do want to chat about. So, um, how this works. So, both groups are going to have the option to cancel. So, it doesn't matter if you get the paper pencil version, you can still cancel your score. Uh, and their scores are going to be released on August 28th. Now, for those of you who are aware about the September LSAT and are thinking, oh, you know, I'm going to take the July LSAT, and if it doesn't go well, I'm going to take the September LSAT, you should be aware that the registration deadline for the September LSAT is August 1st. So you won't even know your score on the July LSAT by the time that registration window closes. So if you are serious about also taking the September LSAT, just be aware that you need to make that decision before your, um, before your uh, July LSAT score is released. August 28th. The reason for that is half of the people are still Scantron, right? So yes, they could obviously do the... Um, uh, they could grade this, the digital versions very fast, but they wouldn't be able to grade the um, um, the other uh, Scantron ones as quickly. In terms of the question, is there a, a, the option to cancel a wrong answer on the tablet LSAT? There is. So if you look here, you have this minus sign in the top corner. That gets rid of an answer choice. Ooh, did I do it? Oh, I selected it. Let me try that from this way. You see that... B is now crossed off, right? And then if I hit the plus sign, it brings it back. So yes, you do have that ability, um, and, our, and our app replicates that. So let's see, next question. Um, again, the main difference from the logic game section is gonna be you don't have the shell, you don't have the organization inherent from having the game on a piece of paper in front of you. So it's really important to stay organized. And yes, no, no, you can go back to change questions within a section. You cannot go in between sections, right? The idea is just like the real LSAT, once the 35 section, 35 minute section is over, that's it. You have to be, you have to move on. If we decide to keep our score, we'll be able to view our correct and incorrect answers. Yes, I believe, but they will not be releasing the exam. So this is an undisclosed exam. Um, and obviously, undisclosed exams are becoming more common because, you know, the better we can do on this exam, uh, the more opportunities we're going to have. Um, and yeah, again, you know, there's no real need to cancel it because they don't average scores anymore. Um, you know, I, the only time I would recommend canceling is if you know for sure that um, that you don't, you, you something happened and there's no chance, right? Otherwise it doesn't matter, right? Having a low score won't matter um, as long as you can get the score you need. Do I think the time clock in the upper right will be a permanent thing? Absolutely. That's the new timer. So as you know, we created that analog 
analog watch that a lot of our, our competitors copied. Um, but uh, the good news is that watch is completely obsolete as of the July LSAT because now uh, the way that the, the, the timer works, um, you actually have a digital LSAT timer in the top right hand corner. And then you will have a, a pop up five minute warning as well. Do I think the curve will be more or less lenient given the circumstances of the test? Well, the one thing to remember is LSATs aren't curved on an individual basis. It's not one exam that establishes the curve uh, for the LSAT. It's, it's over a period of time. And no, I do not think uh, that that will make any difference to this. Um, let's see what else. So if you don't know if I answered your questions uh before, um, obviously this will be available for replay, um, so you guys can, can watch it, um, the parts that you missed. Um, so we're still, still getting some questions about the writing section. So I do wanna emphasize again, guys, the writing section of the exam is not something to worry about at all, right? I mean, the LSAT is enough to worry about without thinking about the part of it that's not scored, right? Why, we don't really wanna think about that, right? And again, it's not even part of the exam anymore. Um, all we want to do is, you know, again, make an effort because I think, you know, it's important. Remember, they will send it to every law school you apply to. Right? It's not part of your score, but they will send it in, and law schools might look at it. So you can imagine a scenario where you totally half ass it on your writing sample. They send it to a law school. That law school glances at your personal statement that looks like it's written by, Heming by, by Ernest Hemingway. There's going to be some red flags drawn, right? And it could have been the case that you were just you know, BSing your writing sample. Um, so that's something to definitely keep in mind. Just try to make an effort on it. You know, I used to think that the, the purpose of the writing sample um, was just another security check by having a sample of the person's handwriting, right? Uh, but the fact that it still exists on the digital LSAT, uh, an online version obviously means that there's, there's something else to that. Uh, and so there's clearly something that they're looking at there, just not part of uh, your scaled score. Um, um, in terms of um, in, in terms of uh, uh, applying to, to law school is getting your LSAT score where it needs to be to be accepted. And again, if you're not sure what that is, look at the 2575 LSAT score ranges of the schools you're interested in. And at worst case, you should be within the 2575 range. Ideally, though, we can get above the 75 range which will give you a great chance of any being admission. Do I think applying early decision is a bad idea? It's really a matter of preference, right? Um, I think it's really a matter of preference. Do you um, really have a school that you wanna to go to and you're okay? Because I, I think a lot of early decisions, right, you have to commit if they accept you. Um, and so that's something um, to think about. Now, um, a question here about sufficient and necessary. And so, you know, another thing that I, I have noticed, you know, a lot of people saying we, we diagram every question, you know, it's in a, in a couple of random places. Again, that, that's not true. I mean, yeah, in the sufficient and necessary lesson, we, we do um, diagram every question because we're introducing the concept of sufficient and necessary. We're trying to get you super comfortable with this idea. And the best way to get super comfortable with this idea is diagram everything when you start. That doesn't mean you're gonna do that on exam day, right? Uh, the way to think about the LSAT is you're training for, for a fight, right? Uh, we're gonna be doing some things in practice that we're not gonna do in the ring, which is totally fine. The point is getting yourself to a position where you can perform um, at, at, your, at your peak um, on, on the digital LSAT, right? Or, or on the LSAT in general, but obviously no, it's, it's gonna be a digital LSAT. Um, I'm not sure what URM boost means. So if you want to clarify um, that, uh, you know, I, I'm old, so I apologize if that's some kind of lingo. Um, how many hours per day, per week did you study during the seven months? Great question. So um, I think what's important is um, you want to think about LSAT prep as kind of a two-step process. Right? And I think that's really the misconception that bothers me about the traditional model, right? This idea that you should sign up for your LSAT prep course um, eight to 10 weeks before your target exam date is a phenomenal idea. 
from the perspective of a company that's going to recharge you when you're not ready to take the LSAT, right? The thing about the LSAT that I'm sure everyone here who's been preparing for it is already well aware of is it's a unique exam. It's testing a way of thinking. It's not a subject-based exam. This is not the SAT. It's not the ACT. It's not GRE. It's not GMAT, right? This is testing a way of thinking and changing the way your mind works is a very different process from memorizing and regurgitating subject matter, right? And so for me, um, it was a, you know, I had, um, during my course, I treated, tried to treat it as a part-time job, right? It was, this was over summer, right? So I wasn't working. Um, I was really just doing LSAT prep. Um, and I tried to treat it as a part-time job. But the one thing to keep in mind is there's an upper limit to the amount of time you can spend per day on LSAT in, until your mind just turns to mush, right? And I'm sure if you've been preparing, um, you've, you've seen that happen where you just, nothing is getting through. And I think you want to get up, take a break, walk away from it, right? There's no reason to force yourself to expose yourself to materials. Um, you know, uh, again, what that upper limit is, I think it varies by person, right? I think... Um, like for me, logical reasoning and reading comp were very draining mentally for me. I mean, my reading comprehension skills were terrible. I was a business econ undergrad. I didn't read for my major. I didn't read in my, my spare time. I, I was deep in the matrix when I was an undergrad, right? Um, and so obviously those reading comprehension skills um, needed to get up to speed for me to even have a chance at, at doing what I wanted to do. And I found, you know, obviously reading comp can be really dense, um, you know, and, and obviously it's draining. So for me, I found logic games to be really a lot easier to, to deal with. I could do a lot of logic games and not feel that fatigue, right? Um, but that wasn't the case with with game uh, with logical reasoning and reading comp. So I think it's a it's a personal thing. Um, but again, that you'll know it when it arrives because you'll be staring at the page or the, the, the tablet um, and nothing's getting through. And I think that's when you know, hey, let me take a break and, and come back. And again, the beauty of having an on-demand course is you don't need to worry about if you're going at the pace that the class told you or if you did the homework between the, the, the last session and the next session, right? So, um, you know, that's one of the things that drives me crazy, this idea that students learn at the same pace or process the information at the same rate it's just it's disingenuous and i think you know coming up with a system that's personalized that allows you to go at a, at a pace that makes sense to you i think also helps you feel less like you need to cram 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 um because you're, you're going to lose um access or or you got to show up on thursday and learn something new um is there a timer on the digital lsat yes top right corner just like the lsat max app um it's going to be the exact same thing and it will have a five minute uh, pop up. Another thing you start to notice is, you know, actually everyday life is littered with it, right? And, um, you know, one of the things I noticed, you know, as I was preparing is that like, my friends and family, you know, they didn't find arguing with me to be as enjoyable as it was before I started to kind of learn the foundations of formal logic. Um, and so, you know, and that's why we talk about trusting the process, right? You know, I think even for myself, you know, the journey was not easy. And, you know, I'd be the first to say that of my ac academic career, I had never felt challenged the way I did with the LSAT, um, without question. Uh, I mean, the bar exam uh, to me is is like literally like a walk in the park compared to, to the LSAT, um, which is good news for you guys as you look forward, right? When you when you start studying for the bar exam and, and, and you use bar max hopefully um, it's a completely different experience um, but for me it was you know I think what 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 happens for students is you know assuming you've been taught it the right way the issue is the time pressure has a tendency to make you break from strategies that are going to ultimately make you successful on the exam right like for example for me I remember I couldn't get my logical reasoning down to where I needed to be in. And something to think about as you think about target scores is how you plan to get there. Like for example, for myself, you know, I, I had, you know, I knew I wanted to break a 170 and um, I had come up with a roadmap 
to get that score. And that roadmap was perfect on logic games, two to three per logical reasoning section, three to four on, on reading comp for a maximum wrong of 10, which God willing would put me in the 170 range. And so let's be honest, right? There's nothing that you're going to do on Sunday that's going to make a difference, right? I mean, this, the work you've done up until this point is going to make the difference, right? So I think you should feel comfortable in that 